Notion is an amazing tool to manage the information within your company. But sometimes you also need to share it with external parties. Until recently, that didn't really work well. But luckily, we now have granular permissions in Notion, which makes it a lot easier to create these setups. So whether you need to share information with your clients, freelancers or investors, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set things up in a secure and scalable way. We start with a fairly typical setup. We have our client's database, and in this case, we have tasks and meetings related to that client, and we want to be able to share that. Although the system, of course, works with pretty much any level of complexity, so no matter how many objects you have, right, you'll be able to adjust this. This is probably how a lot of the workspaces look right now, right? We have then also on our entry, of course, our typical um, you know, dashboard where we see all the tasks and meetings related to this one specific client. The challenge now, how do we share this with them, right? Without exposing the data that Techstart Inc. number two has. If you're new to Notion, then your intuitive uh, approach to this might be to simply open the dashboard, right? That you've built for your client and saying, well, I want to share this with them. I've already done this, right? So I went in here and I shared this with our other consulting account. But if you inspect this then, how it looks for them, right? You see the issue. If I am in my other account, I see Akmakov, right? And I see the headlines, but I don't see any of the entries from the tasks because the underlying database has not been shared with me. Now, I can, of course, could do now the same, right? I could go to share tasks and meetings and share those databases with the client, but that would expose all entries in them, right? Even if I have a filtered view here, they would still be able to click back to the original one and then see all the work that I do for other clients. Probably not what we have in mind. Luckily, Notion has now granular permissions, which allow us to solve this issue, right? And share only the tasks related to this specific client with the accounts from that client. In order to achieve this, we actually need to extend our system a little bit. Pretty much on every entry that needs to be part of this sharing workflow, we need to add a new person property. Uh, so let's click on plus, let's click on uh, person and let's call this access. And then add the property here. Let's do the same on this database, access, and then also on the um, clients one for access. Because what we can do now in a notion is we can write rules on the database and say, okay, if someone is in the access column, please, share the database with them. Now, in order to do it, we need to open the database as a full page. We actually, for demo purposes, have these databases here set up as inline versions, but regardless of whether yours is inline or a full page, you can always click on the three dots, right? And then say, um, view database. And now you have it open as a full one. And in this setting, I can now click on share. And you can see in my permission rules, I see, okay, I have full access to this database. That's generally what I want. And now instead of inviting the client to the whole database, I can invite them to only the records that are relevant for them. So we're going to do this, add new rule, right? We say, okay, whoever is in the access property should have, and then we can pick their permissions, right? If we want the client to edit their entries, right? Change the status of a task, we'll leave it on that. If we just want them to look at this and not take any actions, we would take a can comment or can view. For now, let's keep it on can edit and let's create this rule. Then let's quickly uh, add MF Consulting into this comp, just inspect how it looks on the front end. And we see in a moment when we refresh um, this page here, we'll see this pop up. You see already the entry looks much better here, right? And if I refresh this whole entry once, we should see the task pop up. There it is, task one for MF Consulting. Since we had chosen the can edit option, right? I can, as the user, click in here and I can rename this to task, you know, to a test, something like this and modify it without any issues. If we had other properties in there, I could do the same. Now, what I can do, of course, is click into meetings or clients and see the other clients. Since there's no access to the related database, right? Uh, Notion prohibits me from doing this. So through this access method, right, you don't need to worry about accidentally sharing more information than you want. As long as your database is set up the right way, right? No access for them on the database level and then only through page level access. Now, this, of course, is a nice start, but it's not fully there yet for a system for a large company or agency, because having to click into every single task right, and uh, providing access to this is nicer through this, but it's still not very scalable. So how can we automate that whenever we create new tasks or meetings for Agma Corp, everyone who should have access to them gets 
that access? Well, the answer is automations. Now, in order to set this up, we first need to add the uh, accounts that we want uh, to share access with, also on the client level. And while we add it, make sure that this is also set up cleanly. Previously, when I showed you that I had shared it through this setting, I just removed them here and also gave them access through the page level so that we have a clean, scalable system, right? We basically create our clients here, provide them with access there, then they can start seeing a dashboard. And now it's time for the automation so that they can also access the other entries. To do so, we click on the flash icon here and we call this um, um, share or uh, like set access for clients. Now the trigger for this automation will be that we modify the client property, right? Whenever the client uh, property changes, we need to change the access. And if you've never built a Notion automation before, don't worry, just follow step-by-step step along. And I'll link a video down in the description with a full in-depth uh, guide that I have on how to build really, really cool Notion automations if you wanna learn more of the behind the scenes. For now, we've set our trigger. Let's do the action. New action, edit property. We want to modify what is in access. And we want to use a custom formula to do so. The custom formula, again, <laughs> no worries. Just follow along and afterwards check out the video for you know a bit more of a background knowledge. We want to take the trigger page, so the page that started, like where the client has changed. And then we assume that, uh, sorry, dot clients. And then we assume for this simple scenario that we always have one client on there. Right? You can make this more complex, um, but for this example, let's keep it simple. So I'm going to say first. And then if I type dot again, we now get the properties from our client database. So it means we can now grab whatever is in the access value, right? And this basically now says, okay, look at the trigger page from uh, like where this just happened. Look at the client related to this task and then set the same people that are on the client in access. So let's save, let's enable. And let's just test this, right? We're sort of um, task two. What happens if we now set uh, Agma Corp here, right? In a moment, this should trigger and it should pull in also MF Consulting here and write this as access level. Sometimes it takes a second for this to write, right? But now you see, without me doing anything else, right? Just by assigning this task to this client, we automatically shared it with the person. We can sort of test, right, on the other side. Yep, that works, right? That other client has now automatically the access to this task. And if I add a third task, right, just for the sake of it, task three, that of course doesn't show up here until we, again, assign it to the client and have the automation run through the motions. This is only one part of the flow though, of course, because you also wanna be able to update permissions if you change who is in this feed, right? If you add more people, or remove people, it should also add or remove them down from all the related entries. This is an automation you need to build on the client level or wherever it is that you, you know, want to have the access inherit down from. So we're going to go here now, right? and we're going to click and call this uh, modify access on tasks and meetings. Here, our trigger will be that the access property is edited. Now, whenever this is changed, what we want to do is we want to modify all related tasks and all related meetings. In order to do so, we first need to define them as variables. Notion automations are a bit tricky here. So we need to go in, say define variables, and we will first call this one tasks. Click on the edit as formula option. And here say, okay, from the trigger page, give me the tasks and basically my relation. And then we do the same for meetings or for any other number of entries that you have, right? Meetings. Same idea, trigger page dot meetings. Now, once that is done, we can then add another action and say, okay, please edit pages in. And here you will now be able to select uh, your variables. And that's why it's so important because otherwise you have no way of editing only the tasks related to this entry, right? If I just go to task, you see, okay, all pages, you don't have an option to get dynamic values in here, which is why you need to have the variable defined first. So add action, edit pages in, and then select here tasks as our option. And what do we wanna do with tasks? Well, we wanna modify access, right? And access should be replaced with, again, custom formula, trigger page or client page dot access, right? So whatever was previously in there will be replaced with what now is the access value. And then we do the same for meetings. So again, edit meetings, um, and then added property access, replaced with custom formula, 
trigger page dot access. Let's click on save. Let's enable. And now let's first test this by removing access, right? Let's remove MF consulting. And in a second, this should inherit down and all the access levels here should be cleaned out. Again, might take a few minutes, right? So depending on the runtime for the Notion automations, but in a moment that will be cleaned out. And then after we've done this, we can test adding someone in. Now, while waiting for this to probably run, one quick note. And that is that Notion automations sometimes have the tendency to bug out. And particularly if you have a lot of entries, right? It can happen that this uh, doesn't behave the way you would expect it to, and that it doesn't, um, that it sort of like cleans out some entries, but not all of them. It's a very low chance, but it is there. So it's important that when you use Notion automations to use that you have an eye occasionally on what is still shared here. If you want to be a bit more certain that it executes that way, you want to use a third party automation tool like Make. In that case, you would modify your automation to instead send a webhook. If this is something you're interested in, let me know down below in the comments. So I'll just wait for a few more moments to have this run and then we can see how it works when we add someone back in. Actually, just noticed a small <laughs> bug while recording. If we clear it out, it actually doesn't trigger because Notion doesn't recognize the empty as something it's supposed to replace it with. Just reported this with the team. I think that should be the case. So for all other uh, flows, right, if we just change the person, that works perfectly fine. But if you want to handle the edge case and we want to remove all the access for a client, which if you think about it, is probably not something that ever happens, but still in case you, you need it, right? let's have a look at it. What you would need to do is need to click on the flash icon, duplicate your task here, right? say edit. And then in here, what we want to call this is clear access on task meetings. We want to change the trigger to from is edited to is cleared. And then we need to be a bit creative down here because there's no null value. Um, so instead, what we want to say is we want to toggle. And we want to toggle means basically add or remove people. And we need to find the people that are currently on it. Right? We don't have the actual task entry, but we know every task has the same access levels right? through our automations. So we'll go tasks dot first. And then here can get access. And this will basically toggle off the current values. Same here. right? Go in, say meetings in this case, meetings dot first dot access safe. And now if we click on done and we remove everyone from this, the automation should correctly run and toggle these people all off so that it is all cleared out. Now, why did I say that this is usually not a scenario that you actually need? Well, if you're ever in a scenario where you want to remove the access for the client altogether, you would probably just remove them from your workspace. Which brings us to the next part. How do you actually get a client to be available in this dropdown here? The answer is that you need to first invite them to your workspace. Not necessarily as a member, it is enough to invite them as a guest. So what I highly recommend is that you go into your system and you set up a welcome page right for that client. Maybe you actually set it up in uh, not uh, randomly here, but probably better within this actual entry, right? You could go uh, down below. You could also add them to this one, right? But in some way, shape or form, you want to have this um, welcome page, welcome client, exclamation mark. And then you want to go to the share options and then you want to invite your client's email here. Now, they need to have a Notion account for this. If they don't have one yet, they will be prompted to create one. A free one is more than enough. And then you can add them as a guest here. Be careful that after you go through the flow, you don't click on the add as member option because that will add them as a paid seat, which you probably don't want. And once this is the case, right? Once they are a guest in your workspace, you can then um, select them here as an option. And vice versa, if you want to kick them out of your system, right, you will go to the settings in your workspace, um, to the uh, people part, and then under members and guests, that's where you can remove them all together and remove all their access at once. So much for setting up granular permissions in your workspace. But if you use Notion with your team, then this is only half the piece of the puzzle. Because you also need to make sure that your overall permissions in the system are set up the right way. Otherwise, you risk losing all your data. Which is why I put together a big Notion permissions guide. Just click here and I will see you in a few seconds for everything you need to know about Notion permissions.